seeing if anybody is going to come on here. This is my first time live, so this is pretty crazy. Don't really know how this works. Let's see. I don't know if anybody can see me. Is anyone out there? <laughs> says no viewers Oh, I think I have one vi one viewer. Let's see who it is. I don't even know how you tell who is watching. <laughs> this is so strange. Okay, I think I'm, um, I don't know what I'm doing. If anybody can tell me how to figure out who a viewer is, that would be awesome. Or even how to see messages or something, I don't know. Well, the chat is there, and then the chat is gone. Can anyone see the chat? Maybe? Okay, I don't even know who is out here. Tina, if you are watching, message me and tell me I'm supposed to know who's watching. I feel like a lost duck here. <laughs> I just wanted to show you all what I got at Tuesday mornings yesterday. That's the whole reason I came on here. Let's see. I just messaged Tina to see if she can see me. Let's see. Yes, I can, and here you might have to turn on chat. I thought I'd... I don't know how to do that. <laughs> the chat is open on my side. Let's see, I'm going to try and pull it up on my iPad and see if the chat comes up there. Open on my side. Ooh, that's weird. I can hear myself. I'm going to try and pull it up on my iPad. 
and see if the chat comes up there. Okay, yeah, I need to. <laughs> I need to turn myself off. I don't want to hear myself once, much less twice. Um, I think there's a little delay or something. Doesn't say chat. I have three viewers. Can anybody see where I put a little smiley face on there? It says you are presenting to everyone. I don't know what that means. I, guess I should probably do another uh, couple of YouTube videos to figure out how to do this, huh? This is so crazy. I feel like the biggest dork in the world. I hope everybody is enjoying this. At least this isn't like, um, what day was that, Tina, when I did the entire um, face wash skincare video and then um, didn't realize I wasn't recording. So, yeah, that's hilarious. Oh! There it is. Now I see it on my iPad. Okay, somebody said <laughs> lots of LOLs. Thanks. I'm glad that you guys are getting such a great kick out of this because I feel like the biggest dork in the whole world. Um, hey, Jennifer. Um, I see Little Craft Creations, Jennifer Watts, and Happy Mail. And that's all I see. But it says there's four viewers. So who isn't who isn't messaging? Okay. There's a little bit of a delay between the iPad and the message. Anyway, okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna go forward with this because I feel like such a dork already. So um, my Tuesday morning haul wasn't as great as everybody else's. I can't, I'm beginning to think that my Tuesday morning doesn't get half of the crap that everybody else's gets. Either that or, um, I get there too late. I don't know. That might be a, entirely a possibility. Um, whew, I feel like that is way too bright. Um, so a couple of things I did pick up. I did see, um, these sticky thumb, um, things here. Um, they were a dollar forty nine a piece, which I actually thought that was pretty cool. And I did look; they had um, permanent double sided, and they had permanent dotted or something. And I don't, I don't know about y'all, but I don't like the dotted. I like the solid. So I bought them out of those. I bought four of those. So that was a dollar forty nine. And then what else did I get? Oh, like I really need any paper at all but i couldn't resist um i need i don't know about you guys but i always need white so they had um a hundred pieces for four bucks of the white oh that is really bright sorry guys blinding you um so they i thought that was a pretty good deal warehouse card stock warehouse paper acid free lignin free archival quality so I thought that was a pretty good deal. And then I use a lot of um, solid color stuff. So they had this pack, which had these colors, which I thought was pretty cool. And that is 120 pieces for five bucks. So cardstock warehouse again. So yay. Um, and then I don't know why I like this one. Um... But it was $5 for these. 
those are the papers on the bottom like that but I liked it I think I liked it because I can't remember why I liked it that's pretty stupid isn't it um I liked it for these you see those um I thought those would really be cute for the front of some beach cards um, this summer and then I got a is that different than this one? Yeah. I got a different page. Um I thought that was really cute because on the top, I don't know if you can see on the top. Oh, you can't see it here because you can't see the camera. Um, there's a flamingo. Can you see the flamingo right there? And the other day, when I did the Michaels, let's see if I can find it. Oh. When I did the Michaels haul the other day, um, oh, I don't know where it is. It's in here somewhere. But I got a flamingo guy. I don't know. He must have flew away. Because I don't know where he is. Horses and unicorns and all kinds of other crap. But and you'll see what I also bought in a second. Um, oh, there it is. So I have this that I got at Michael's on clearance. Um, and I thought that would be cute with this paper. The flowery, the flowery one like there. Um, or the beachy one. I don't know. Yeah. See? Tipping crap over. My craft room isn't as nice and pretty as <laughs> Tina's is. Um, so that was three twenty-five, and this was five. So I figured I could make some pretty good cards out of that. Um, the other thing I got was this, which I thought that was actually really cute. I wanted it for the and symbol, um, because I want to do like you and me on cards or whatever and that was only $3.99 so that's why I picked up that guy and then the piece de resistance which was this is this and it has a chalk space on the front I will probably never ever use that for chalk but it was beautiful things um I thought I had how much it was on there it's like $16 $16.99, that's what it was. Um, but I liked it because right now, you're going to laugh when you see this, but right now I am using, I don't even know what this thing is for, but I'm using this for all my dies. And it's really hard to find everything. Okay, let's see. <laughs> um, so this is going to be the new storage here for dies, and then I have a little space that I'm actually going to push it up against the, the wall of the desk here, and yeah, and keep it basically so it's not stacked like this, and I, I noticed the other day that I have so many dies in here, look, that it's pulling away, so, you know. Joy of joys. So that'll probably be my project for tomorrow to pull all the dies out. And then I got aggravated because, um, yeah, I thought it was cute storage too. I got aggravated the other day because a lot of the dies I get are off of Wish and they come in these little bags. Um, so I went through all of my little bags and I put what they are on them because when they're sideways sticking in one of these little things, you can't see what they are. So I wrote, 
hearts on the corners of the things so when they stick out I can actually see what they are. Don't feel bad, just try to organize my room. Yeah. <laughs> I keep telling myself that I'm going to take this. I have an L-shaped desk. This is a really funny story. We moved into this house. Um, the guy that owns this house, it's a double, it's a brand new double wide trailer. Um, and this, it's a three bedroom, two bath. The third bedroom I made into my office slash craft room, which you can see right back there. That's a lot of office and a lot of junk. Um, but, um, one of my friends came over and he put this, it's like a, when you go into a business and you are, you come in and you go to the counter and the receptionist is sitting behind the desk and you can lean your arms, you know, like on it and you can talk to her, but her computer is underneath the counter. That's the kind of desk I have in here. So it's this big L shaped secretary desk, which is really cool. And I love having the shelf up so I can put stuff up on the shelf, which is awesome. But, um, when he put it together, it was broken. So when my friend came over and he put it together, he literally screwed brackets underneath of it and everything. Well, now that we have it in here. We put it up, got it situated where, you know, of course, where he's a man. So where he said where I wanted it, um, it's in front of the window. And I'm very much a, I like to see out. The window is behind the desk now. Um, and I like to open the window when it's nice outside. And I like to see it, it, the window is facing the driveway. So if somebody drives in, like the mailman or somebody, because we live literally in the country. So if the mailman comes in or someone drives in, I can hear the dogs bark. But I can't see if anybody has driven in the driveway. So I want to move the desk from the L shape that it sits like this right now. And I want to move it over there into that corner. But no one wants to help me. <laughs> So, I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess maybe I could hire some people to come and help me for a couple of hours, but, you know. So, anyway. Um, I guess, thank you very much for coming on my live. <laughs> this has been an experience and a half. Um, yeah, it's been an experience, alright. So, um... Oh, wow, that sucks, Jennifer. Um, I have a closet, but it, honestly, it's filled with boxes and, and crap. I probably should be going through all that and um, getting rid of a lot of it. I want to... My daughter gets married in a year, and a year and a half, actually. She gets married in June of next year. And my goal is to move into a tiny house um or do a shed conversion um like a take a 14 by 40 and make it into a house and uh i would love to do that um again i don't, if i can't find anybody to move this desk i don't know that i'm gonna be able to find anybody to help me build the shed either <laughs> but you know it may, it may be a pipe dream but um my goal is to downsize and get rid of a lot of junk that I don't have. So I probably should go through that closet and get rid of a lot of crap. But you know what? That's for another day. Plus, I don't want to leave my daughter with that to take care of. If something ever happens to me, that would suck. Um, so nobody's really talking except me. Um, yeah. <laughs> the only problem with that, Tina, and I would love to do that. Um, but there's no neighborhood boys around here because, um, we live in the country. The, my daughter's karate instructor is, he was looking for a investment property. And so, um, he said, I'm thinking about getting, um, a trailer and putting it out in the middle of my field on my property and, um, getting it all set up. I just don't know who I'd want to rent it to. And so we were living in town and not happy with where we were living. And so I said, well, if you put a house brand new house out in the middle of the of a field i'll rent it and so true to his word he put a double wide he let me pick out the house so i got to pick everything out 
um, this way I wanted it set up. My, my bedroom is absolutely gargantuan huge. Um, my bathroom is huge. My closet is the length of my bathroom, which is half of the house. So if you think about a double wide is, I think this house is, um, the house is, how wide is this house? 28 feet wide. So 14 feet is my closet. <laughs> um, no, I don't have any neighbors except Marty and his wife and they're older. Um, so they're not going to help us move. Um, so I like the house and I feel bad because I really do like it out here. But I can't see um, staying in this big of a house all by myself after my daughter gets married and moves out. So I'm trying to get a plan together. And I, you know, who wants to pay $850 rent and over $150 in utilities and $30 in water and all that junk when it's just me and the dog. So, actually me and probably three dogs. So, anyway, yeah, it's a really good sized place. It's really long. Um, someday on a live when it's light out, I'll do a, um, a walkthrough of the house. It's really nice. I have it set up really nice. My daughter helped me set it up. And it's real pretty. But um, it's actually really clean right now too. So that's unusual. I'm not a I'm not a very good housekeeper. So um, somebody was asking. Um, you guys were talking the other. Remember we were on Tina's live the other night. I don't remember who was here. Um, Jennifer, was that you that was here? I know Tina was on live and we talked about these watercolor. Remember the distress watercolor papers? Does anybody remember that? Yes, no. <laughs> yeah, I would love to have a big place for future grandchildren, but unfortunately, um, my daughter says they are not having kids right away. So, um, in the shed conversion that I'm thinking of, that I want to do. It will have a loft on one side. My bedroom will be downstairs, but it'll have a loft on one side of the house, which will be over my bedroom, the kitchen, the bathroom area. So the living room will be all open. Living dining room and my craft area will be all open. Um, but there'll be a loft on one side of the house, and I figure that'll be for grandkids when they come over. And Because, like, who wouldn't want to stay in a loft if you were a kid? So... Um, but I don't think they'll be able to get up there probably for a couple years, so. Um, Jennifer, yeah, I think so. I think so, what? Sorry, I'm not very good at keeping up with the chats. I thought you could see chat on the actual thingamabob here, maybe. Am I crazy? Is that not true? You know? Let me know. And does Tina, when yours comes up, does it say you are presenting to everyone with a little green bar at the cross the top? I don't exactly know what that means. Yeah, I think that... Um, Oh, yeah, Jennifer. Yeah, that was the watercolor paper. I thought that was you. Um, I really like the idea. I like a, I have a, I probably won't be able to see it, but um, I have a floor plan that I drew up. Um, I'm on a lot of those Facebook sites on um, for shed conversion people that are actually living in them. And there's a lot of hoopla about whether whether or not you're, allowed to live in a shed house, first of all. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know why I'm not seeing it there, but, um, so I see a lot of people and what they're doing with their shed houses, and, um, there's just, I mean, there's just some amazing things. Having an open area with, um, I want to take one end of it and put, like, a a French door, double French door, 
that opens up into a deck with a fenced yard so I can open up the doors and let the dogs out and um, I can have a craft room out in the open um, so that I don't have to be stuck in a bedroom. I can watch television. I can whatever. I have a one of those um, electric fireplaces, the big one with the built-in mantle and all of that. And um, I have my TV set on top of that. So I want to put that in the living room and be able to watch television from the craft area. Um, just, I don't know. I just have grandiose ideas about <laughs> what it's going to look like when it's finished. So we'll see. Um, babe, yeah. you want to come say hello? I finally figured out how to do live. It's a delay up there, but there's my baby. That's my daughter. Hello. This is Beth. Hi, everyone. I think um, there says there's four people, but I do you know anything about live? Are they talking to you? Yeah, they're talking up here because I can't see it down here. Okay, how do I do? How do I see it down here? I've never done that. So. Me either. And it says you are presenting to everyone, but I don't. I don't know. What I turned that on, so I don't know what happens if I turn that off. Stop presenting? I don't know what that means. All right, you, do, stops the you guys let me know if this stops. Oh, everybody's saying hi to you. Hi. Okay, did it stop broadcasting? No, it says stop. It says live on the bottom. So, so I don't know what that is. So I don't even know where to find the, tech, the chat because, you know, I turned, I did this. But nothing's coming up. Maybe somebody that knows more about life can tell you. Well, team is on here watching, but um, I don't know. Doesn't say anything. Tina says hello. So pretty. Congrats on the marriage. Thank you. Yeah, she's excited. She's got her dress already. Um, the first time we went out looking for dresses, she picked. Um, she picked out her dress and bought it the very first time. We were going to look at ideas of wedding dresses. Don't go wedding dress shopping unless you're ready to spend the money. <laughs> <laughs> so she had her wedding dress in February a year ago. And they weren't getting married until June of next year. So she's had her wedding dress last in my year. closet. Since yeah, last year. since last year. A year ago yesterday. Yeah. So... Yeah, crazy. Clean it back to your dog. What happened to my dog? Well, one of them decided to eat crackers. Oh, they're on the kids. Yeah, oh, yeah. They're all gone, and then another needed to go outside, and I didn't. Great. So, if y'all didn't know, we have um, thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> um, we have six dogs, and. Um, they are a mess. Let's just say that. Um, yeah, they're just a mess. I was going to see if I could show you any of them, but who's in here? There's Gizmo. You want to see Gizmo? Here's Gizmo. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. That is really awesome. So, this is Gizmo. He's my boy, Doxy. He's my stud, right? He's my stud. He's the only man that I need in my life right now. <laughs> right. Are you the only man I need in my life? Did you eat the crackers? I had um, cheese and crackers for lunch, and I think I left the crackers on the end table, and um, I think somebody got into them and ate Gizmo. them. Yeah, I figured it was Gizmo. So that's Gizmo. I have three doxies. I have Gizmo is my male, um, Zoe is my female, and... We were supposed to be um, babysitting a dog for a friend for some friends of ours, and um, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have three hot dogs. Um, the one we were supposed to be babysitting, she kind of said, well, you know, we really don't have a place for him, and we know you love her, and so um, we just want you to keep her. So that made our five dogs go to six, and then we want to sell them. We want to breed them and sell them because dachshunds are awesome awesome family dogs um so sorry i have a hangnail um so we didn't think that we were gonna be able to have either of them get pregnant because my zoe my girl um she went into heat and didn't get pregnant and then laney is the babysitting dog um she's a dapple um she went into heat and we didn't think that she got pregnant either and then Beth was gone the other night, so she slept with me in my bed. And when she laid down next to me, she was like, and I told Beth the next day, I said, um, I don't think she's pregnant. And uh, she is. So that's how you end up with two cats. So, okay, tell me, Little Crafts Creation, what is your name? I feel like I should know this, but I keep forgetting I love all these people came over from <laughs> Tina's um, channel to watch my channel. So that's pretty awesome. Y'all are awesome. And I still don't have any chat. You're going to have to tell me, Tina, why the group chat doesn't work for me. No. Broadcast large video that I see audience and hide other video. No. New guest in my large broadcast from you. No. That's the cameraman. So I don't have any idea. I don't know. Michelle. Okay. All right. Michelle. I'm going to have to remember that because, you know, I'm not, a, not very good with names when I don't know people. So, I don't know what is wrong. Is it because Hangouts? Is it the Hangouts chat, maybe, that I'm not seeing? Maybe? Somebody? Mueller? Do you, Tina, do you have two windows open on your screen when you're doing streaming? you even know if that's the case? Or do you do hangouts on air? Yeah, that's the sound. Did you hear the squeaking? <laughs> yeah, that's probably the dog toy. And the funniest part about it, I have, um, I had a dachshund that... Here's a little story about the dachshunds. I had a dachshund, and um, it, he was, we were, Beth and I were out, when I first moved up here, we were out yard sailing one day, and we were driving up in the woods somewhere, going up to this little subdivision or whatever, and when we were coming down through the woods, there was no houses around it, it was just all wooded, you know, just a little, like, street lane or whatever, and um, she, um, she said, Mom, Mom, stop, there's somewhere out in the road. So I stopped in the middle of the road, and we jumped out, and there was a little bitty dachshund underneath Aww. my car. And he was the cutest thing in it could be. And it looked like he must have gotten out of someone's fence or something, because he had mud all over his nose and all over the top of his head and down his back. And no collar. And we looked around, and there were, like, no houses in this area. And it was like he came out of the woods somewhere. So she grabs him up and he's shaking and everything um so she basically held him and said well you know we can't can't just let him out there in the woods so we took him home we already had um a um, Lhasa and a Palm Yorkie 
So he became the third and he was mine. And then my daughter got a puppy when she went off to college, which I don't even know why a child gets a dog when they go to college. But anyway, she got a dog when she went to college. So he became the fourth dog when he, he was really mine, my dog. Um, and at the house we lived in two houses ago, um, Duff would get Beth's dog. He's a bigger dog. Um, he would get out. He, if somebody opened the front door, he would literally zip past you so fast out the front door that you wouldn't even know that he had like went past you because he was so quick. Well, one day when I came home, I went through the front door and he zipped past me and Loki zipped past me as well. And he was a little bitty dachshund and here's this, you know, five times bigger than him. Um, Shelty chow mix. Um, and they went out and I guess toured the neighborhood and on the way back, Loki couldn't keep up with him. Duff came in the house and when Loki came past um, over the over the road to catch up to him to get back in the house, um, somebody hit and run, hit him. And um, when they hit him, the lady, she was two doors down from us and this little cookie cutter house is on this little curvy street. And she came and got me and we wrapped him up in a blanket and basically it broke his back. And so I don't have thousands of dollars, unfortunately, to spend on animals. So um, we had to put him to sleep. And I was so, so sad that um, I couldn't stop crying. Isn't that sad how dogs get in your heart? Um, but, yeah, it was very sad. It was a really, really hard time in my life. So this lady had, Beth kept saying, I think you need another dog. I think you need another dog. So, like, within three days, um, I couldn't stop crying still. So there was this lady on Facebook, and she said, I have this puppy that I'm just trying to get rid of. I don't want it anymore. I don't want it. Um, it's the last of a second litter. So later, literally, she got her dog had a litter. She sold all the puppies, and she didn't know that the dog was going to go into heat right again, right away again, and he got pregnant again. So she had basically gotten rid of all the dogs except the last one, and the last one was the one she had on Facebook. So she said he was a Chihuahua. I don't know that he's a Chihuahua at all, but he's crazy. Thor. So the other one's name was Loki. So his name is Thor. Come on, baby. Come on, boy. Good boy. Yeah. So. Oh. So this is Thor. <laughs> what is it with my ears? I swear to you, I wash behind my ears. So, so this is Thor. And he is the cutest and sweetest dog. You're a mess, aren't you? Yeah, don't lick. Please don't. Please don't. He's like the doctor in the house. He licks everyone's ears and cleans everyone's ears, right? Yes, you're a good boy. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay. But um, he's so sweet. And he literally got me out of my funk when Loki died. So he has a special place in my heart. I don't actually know what kind of dog he is, though, because he's got this long, really soft hair on his feet. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see it. But he's just the sweetest thing in the world. Right. Your sweet boy. Hmm? <laughs> but they say he's Chihuahua, but... um. Oh, gosh, Jennifer. And cats are just... Whew, it's hard to get rid of cats. It seems like no one wants cats. I see um, my daughter has... Um, she has two cats. A cat that we had when we lived um, where she grew up in um, Central South Carolina in Columbia. And then when she went off to college, I stayed there for a year. But I'm divorced, and my husband, my ex-husband, lived across town with his new wife, and I just didn't have any desire to stay down there. So, after Beth, um, yeah, he looks like a, that's what I kind of thought was a Springer Spaniel, but he, could, he does kind of have the chow face, or the, um, not the chow, the 
chihuahua face, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what he is. I guess I could do a DNA test, but I just really don't care that much, I guess. Um, but so after I had been in um, Columbia and a year without Beth, I decided um, I didn't want to live there anymore. So I found a renter for my house because I got the house and the divorce. So I found a renter and I looked for a place to rent and I moved up here to be near my daughter. So we've lived a couple different places. When she got out of college, um, she went to college for, um, she lived in the dorms for three years. So her senior year of college, she moved out and moved in with me when I lived in town. And then she went to, on to get her master's degree um, oh, that's cool. Um, when she stayed and got her master's degree, she lived with me and then she graduated last May. So, um, now she has a job and started her real life <laughs> bills and all. Um, so now they're saving for their, their wedding and lots and lots of planning going on for the wedding so I still don't have any idea how you watch the comments on this Tina at the same time that you're doing the chant the video it's crazy I guess I'm gonna have to watch another video watch another video to find out I don't know but um, it says there's five people in here now. So all I see is um, Tina and Jennifer. Michelle's still here, I think. Michelle, are you still here? Maybe. thought maybe you could like click on the links and it shows where the viewers are or whatever, but that's not working either. And there's nothing in the settings or the hangout. I don't know. Hey, Andrea. I watched a YouTube. I swear to God, this kid, I think he was 12, showing me how to go live on YouTube. I actually was kind of embarrassed. Just to hear. So these dogs are fighting at my feet. Um come here Riley. I'll show you Beth's newest puppy. We had a fiasco with her too. This is her newest puppy, her Chihuahua. This is Riley. I know every time you say Riley I laugh, Tina. <laughs> Say hi, Riley. Hey, Riley. Good girl. Good girl. We had um our um Pom Yorkie that we had um since Beth was little. Um, I think she got something wrong with her kidneys or something, and she got to the point where she couldn't um. <laughs> Jennifer, if you watched from the very beginning of this live, you will see how many thousands of times I said, I think I'm just giving up on this. I just really don't think that I'm going to do this because I don't know what the flip I'm doing. But I figure, you know, I had a great mentor in Miss Tina that um, I could do this. So I don't know how many times I will do it because kind of weird talking about yourself I'm not used to that um but um beth had a palm yorkie her name was porky um yorkie porky and um she had something wrong with her kidneys and they said they could do like all these scans and they could do surgery and she was like 13 years old and so um we made the decision um, 
trying to color the hippos. Who's got hippos? I have hippos. I have hippo die cuts. I don't have any stamps. So, but anyway, we had um, Porky the Palm Yorkie, and um, they said, yeah, you can do surgery, but she's 13, and she may or may not come out of it. So, um, I really couldn't see doing surgery on um, a dog that may or may not live through the surgery or significantly um, prolong her life. I guess so at our house you um live or die unfortunately um that's the way i was raised we were raised on a farm and we did not take life-saving extravagant measures to save animals so my parents didn't believe in that so i guess i kind of don't either i mean to each their own it's just something that is here so when she when porky died or we put porky to sleep um, it's been about six or seven months ago, I guess. Um, Beth was very sad because she had, that was the first dog that she had that was just her own. Um, and she was in like fifth grade, I think. Fifth or sixth grade. So she had had her a long time. So um, she wanted another dog. So we went to, they have a place here called the Jockey Lot, which is like a huge um <laughs> um yeah farm girls rule that's right um see now i forgot what the flip i was talking about um I swear i have a brain cramp i had pizza for supper maybe that's why i have amnesia or something i don't know what the heck was i talking about Oh, Beth getting a puppy. We have this place here called the Jockey Lot. It's like a huge flea market. It's like the largest flea market in South Carolina. And they have um, indoor and outdoor spaces. They have indoor spaces. They have covered spaces. And then they have just... Um... Oh, that's cool, Andrea. Um, and they have just like concrete tables that people can set up like... Um, rummage sale stuff, garage, garage sale stuff, and sell whatever they want to sell. So they have, in the indoor section, um, if you walk through the indoor section, then the back section they have, like, these little bitty tiny sh sheds that, I don't know, are they like a shed? I think they're like a shed. Like little tiny buildings with windows and a door. They have um, people decorate them all up or whatever, and they have crates and stuff in there, and they sell pets. <sighs> That's all I want to say. They sell dogs. Um, so you can pretty much find any kind of dog you want up there. So Beth went up there. She had money. She wanted to buy a dog. So she went with her fiancé and me. And she picked out a dog. We brought the dog home. Cute, cute, cute little dog. So we had her for... Got her on Saturday. By Wednesday, something went right. Couldn't figure out what was wrong. Wouldn't eat. Wouldn't drink. All she did was lay around, throw up, have diarrhea. Took her to the vet. She um, she had parvo. So here we are as a customer going to a breeder and the dog has parvo. So the doctor said, um, not going to happen. Um, we can give her some medicine again, but no guarantee that if you spend... I think it was 350 to 500 dollars on parvo medicine there's no guarantee that the dog will even survive after that and she's so little her um and she was so dehydrated and whatever from the parvo that her hair was starting to fall out so he said i think that you're just better off letting the dog go so now we've had porky die on thursday night or friday night Got the new puppy on Saturday. Wednesday or Thursday, we've put the new puppy down to sleep. And we go back out to the place on Friday, no, Saturday, to the jockey lot on Saturday and say, hey, here is the vet bill 
here's all the paperwork on this dog we bought, and it died because it had parvo. And so Beth had spent $280, I think, on this dog. So um, she said, well, I can give you your money back and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And they, her, I let her handle it because it was her dog. And they worked out a deal that she gave her another dog to replace the dog that she that died. So that's when she picked out Riley. So whew, all of that to say she got a new dog. So that was Riley. And I don't know where Lainey is. She's the pregnant one. She's the pretty dog. There's Lainey. Hi, baby. Come here. Come here, little mama. Yeah. Can you say hi to everybody? <gasps> yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you say hi? Mm -hmm. Say hi. I'm a dapple dachshund. Yes. And all of our dachshunds are miniatures. So they only get between 9 and 10 pounds. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. What do y'all think? Isn't she pretty? You're pretty color. I'm interested to see um Yeah, I don't think that they can really come back from Parvo. Um, yeah. Oh, hey, Margaret. How are you? Um, yeah, she's a really pretty dog. I really love her a lot. And she's, excuse me, she's really, really soft. Like, when you pet her, she feels like a, one of those really, really fuzzy pl plush blankets. It doesn't feel like hair on her. It feels just really plushy. So I'm interested to see what kind of puppies she's going to have. Because um, Gizmo is chocolate brown. And um, Lainey is dapple. So we're supposed to know. Um, I think... Um, I think that... Um, her due date because it's just like 63 days um yeah <laughs> it's like the other mom that's hilarious jennifer um laney is a barker she barks at everything and everybody and all the other dogs and everybody that walks by and guy rides by on a scooter and she's like literally tearing him a new butthole because she's so mad he's rode his scooter past her yard so, um, and there's a, like a section of about eight or ten foot of trees in between the fence and the road that we're on, the little country road that we're on. But when someone walks down the road or, um, yeah, I don't like cats. Both of our cats are outdoor. Um, but when they walk down our road or ride their scooters or ride a bicycle, anything that's not a car... Holy macaroni, you think that she was literally ch chewing them up. Um, yeah, I love having my doggies. I really do. Um, Zoe is my girl. She's the first girl I got after um, Thor. Because I wanted to have another. I know I can't wait to see him either. <laughs> Beth keeps telling me that um, we can't keep them, Mom. No matter what they look like. <laughs> no matter how cute they are. We cannot keep them. We have to sell them. So we'll see. Um, but I keep losing my train of thought. What was I think? What was I talking about? I don't know. Who knows? So sometime on here, I want to do a um, art class. Oh. 
Tina, do you remember that um, die that I got? Remember this one? Do you remember that one? It was on, I think it was on clearance at, um, what it, Hobby Lobby? Yeah. <laughs> you want, I love puppies. I just, oh, it's going to be really hard for me to get rid of them. But, um, do you remember me telling you about this die? And you said, I can't wait to see what you do with it. Um, because it's just this. Hold on, I'm going to show you what I did with it. Ouch! I'm cleaning. That's what is it? Yes, I'm cleaning. I asked Beth what she did. I'm gonna have all kinds of puppies. I hope we're taking. Um, see, I was gonna send this to my mom in Appleton, but um. Because it's got these flowers on it, they wanted to charge me $5 at the UPS store to send it. So I told my mom, happy Valentine's Day, over the phone, and said you're not getting a card. <laughs> Which <laughs> kind of sucks. Oh, well, we have two cats, but... um. The cats are um, outside cats. We've had Slim since Beth was probably in 7th or 8th grade or something like that. Before she was in college, I think. And he decided on his own he wanted to be an outside cat. He did not want to be inside. Um, what are you doing? Hi, Zoe. So... He decided on his own to be an outside cat, so that was fine by me because I don't have to do litter box. And I am just okay with that. So, um, so my other doxy, I'll tell you this because I think it's really funny. Um, yeah, thank you all for coming over for supporting me from Tina. <laughs> so I think she's created a monster. Um, so my other dachshund is my female, the one I got, um, she, I wanted a dachshund after Loki had died, but um, I didn't know where to get one from. And then I ended up writing this lady a um, an insurance policy, an accident policy, and she is from Georgia. And she said, oh, we breed and raise dachshunds. Well, we don't breed them anymore, but we raise them. Um, we used to breed them, but she said, I used to get some of my dogs from this guy in Georgia. Well, long story short, I found him. And sure enough, he does sell dachshunds. So um, I ended up getting um, Zoe from him. And that's where I got Gizmo, too. But because um, I was going to try and breed Zoe. And everybody that I talked to that was um, willing to breed was like $400. So um, I was just like, okay, I am not spending um, $400 on dog sperm. Sorry, call me strange, but I just don't think that that's a good amount of money. I don't think that you should spend that kind of money on dog sperm. And then um, all of our dogs are um, CKC registered, and everybody I talked to was AKC registered, and they were so snobby on the phone. Um, I was talking to this one guy, and I said, um, hey, I want to know how much it would cost to um, breed my doxy. And he said, okay, are you AKC or CKC? And I said, we're CKC. And he said, okay, it's $400 um, to $500, depending on what mail you choose. I was like, okay, um, I, I don't know what mail should I choose. And he was like, well, blah, 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 blah. So we went on talking for a couple of hours back and forth through text. And finally he said, um, oh, is it buffering? I'm sorry. Um, he basically said... You know, I've thought about it, and it, um, I don't want to risk the uh, reputation of my kennel breeding to a CKC female, so I'm going to have to say no. And I said, 
Um, really? You do realize that this is dog sperm, right? I mean, we're not talking about brain surgery, donating a kidney. Dog sperm. He said, thank you very much. Have a good day. So, we, um, we didn't talk anymore after that. <laughs> So then I thought about it for a minute, and I thought, well, you know, honestly, if I want to breed long-term, you know, if I want to become a breeder for dachshunds, then why don't I just have my own male? So I spent $200, which was half of the fee for the sperm, and get my own male, and I can have unlimited sperm. <laughs> so that's what I did. So that's how we came up with Gizmo. But this is Zoe. Right, Zoe? Are you a good girl? she's mad at me right now um doxies are so crazy they have such a personality all three of our dachshunds are entirely a hundred and thousand percent different people um yeah he was very stuck up um he um so i had to put collars on all of them because they're starting to dig dachshunds are big about digging holes and i noticed a place we have fencing all around their front yard but I noticed a place where Zoe has been trying to dig um, under the fence. And so I thought, you know what, I need to make sure that they all have collars, they all have name tags, and they all have their um, rabies vaccinations on their collars. And she's awful about wearing a collar. So when I was at um, Tuesday mornings yesterday, I got Gizmo his red collar that he has on, and I got Zoe a collar. So this is Zoe, and she is red. She's my red girl, right? And you can't really tell the difference between um, a red and a chocolate unless they're next to each other. But isn't that a pretty collar? Well, guess what? Miss Zoe is mad at me because I have put a collar on her. So she won't come by me, and she won't lay on my lap or anything because she's depressed because I put a collar on her. Right. She's, she's shaking right now because she's so mad at me, she does not want me to hold her. I love you. Love you down. Are you okay? Hmm? So she has literally um, gone behind the couch and laid behind the couch and laid on the other on top of the other couch, usually they're um, very snuggly. They like to lay on your lap or get underneath of the blanket. If you're sitting on the couch with a blanket, I'm watching TV. Usually I have all three dachshunds on my lap um, all at the same time. So um, I was telling one of my friends the other day that um, I have, I'm the um, happiest woman around. Hey, 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 ouch. Ouch. No growling in here. Go. Um. Yeah, she looks so cute with that on, but she's so mad. Um, so I told them I was the happiest girl in all of South Carolina because I had three wieners in my bed. So, <laughs> um, not many people can say that. Um, so anyway, that's my joke for the night. Um, the card I was telling you about, Tina, with that, um, die. With this die, I did a gatefold. Well, not really. I don't know if it's called a gatefold. But this is the card I made. So, this is the color underneath. And I guess the reason that they wanted to charge $5 shipping was because of these flowers. Because they're kind of tall. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, they're kind of tall. So they did not want 
to ship. So, and I put in there, you know, happy Valentine's Day or whatever. So, I actually thought it turned out pretty cute with uh, this here. It's real thin. And I sandwiched it between the card and a couple layers of paper. Sorry, one of the dogs had the, he had the Tuesday morning bag. <laughs> Tina, you just didn't know I had such a great sense of humor, did you? I think it must be a Wisconsin thing, right? Thanks, Margaret. I thought it turned out really cute. I told my mom, I was like, Mom, I love you and all that. I mean, I really do. Um, but I can't pay $5 to ship you a card. So, I told her the next time I sent her something that I would just put her Valentine's Day card in the package, which is probably pretty cheesy. But, um, yeah. Well, that's what you get sometimes when you get me. You get pretty cheesy. So, um, yeah, I thought you'd like that, the way it turned out, Tina. Um, so, yeah, I was telling you about these watercolors, okay? So this was cardstock. And I took, this is with the um, Distress Oxide ink. I got Worn Lipstick and, what was the other one I got? Broken China, maybe? I don't even see it. Nope, I don't even see it. I don't even know where it went. Anyway, so I just took the pad and I just smushed it. No, this is actually the one I smushed on this rubber mat. I have a, a Fiskars um, rubber mat. Can you see it? Fiskars rubber mat. Um, on my table. And I took the ink and I smeared it around. That's not true either. Um, yeah, it is a Wisconsin thing. Um, and shipping is off the chain. So, um, actually, this is the one I did with the plastic. I took a plastic piece of plastic from, um, I think it was from something like this. It's like a big one, though, a big plastic piece. And I basically just took my ink and I smushed it around all over the two colors. And then I sprayed it. I have these little, um, they used to be glass cleaner. And I filled one with alcohol and one with water. And so I spritzed it with water, that plastic. And then I laid this down on top of it. Smushed it down. And then I was able to tip it over with the plastic on top so I could see through it. And I smushed and smushed and smushed around until I got the coverage that I wanted. And then I pulled it off. And cleaned it all up and this is what I ended up with so this is just cardstock and you can see it's kind of wrinkly and but you put I just put double side tape on it with the terrific tape on it and um it lays right down um this one is the one that everybody was ooh and ah on over I don't know if you can there you go see it it's the um I did it the same way I smeared the color on the plastic and I laid it down. When I dried it, I dried it really good and then I used um, the Recollections. This is actually what I was talking about the other day, how it's sticky. Um, I got this Recollections clear ink with this little bottle and I was like, oh, this is so awesome that, um, oh, hey, hey, Kathy, how are you? Um, Sorry, I, I keep forgetting to look up. Um, so I thought this was really cool because it came with a little bottle, you know, to re-ink it. Um, I don't know if anybody else has found that they like it or not. But this is literally, like, sticky, sticky. Like, it, I don't know. I have another one that is, um... Well, I don't even know where it is now. That's white. Ooh. I don't know where it went. It 
looks like it disappeared. Anyway, I had another one that was the clear ink. It must have dried up or something and I threw it away. I don't know what happened to it. But um, I kept this one. Not, I'm not happy with it. It's just, um, it's really sticky. And when I put it on, well, so this is what I did. So I got it all dry after I did the first layer of, of smooshing with the water. Um, the oxide inks and the, this is actually watercolor paper. That's this stuff. Mixed media. Um, pen, pencil, marker, acrylic, and watercolor. Coated for versatility and durability, heavyweight for journaling and collaging. So that's my watercolor paper. But um, so I cut a piece, smooshed all the ink on it, dried it, and then um, I embossed. So I had my Misty with this. This was a um, Stampin' Up pad. And of course, if you all watched my other video, um, I like making them not wood mounted. Does that make sense? Um, so I ripped it off of the block, <laughs> the wood block, and then I peeled the sticker off the block and put it on the back and cut it down around. So this is basically now a misty stamp. I just put a little bit of adhesive on the back of it and it sticks here. Um, so I put it in the center so that when I had it in the bottom, it covered. And then when I got done embossing with the clear ink, then I flipped it over and did it again so that it covered everything. So there was no break in the middle of the card. Um, and then I used clear embossing powder and I embossed it all. Then I did the ink all over again. So I embossed clear embossed and then squished my ink all over that plastic again spritzed it with water again smushed this down on the paper again picked it up wiped off the parts that got muddy like when the pink and the blue kind of go together it kind of makes a brown so i took a um i had a washcloth so you can even tell why i use this one um I used the washcloth and I just literally just dabbed like that to get the um, the brownish color off. And then I heat used a heat gun again to dry it. Um, and I let a lot of it dry on its own so that it wouldn't get too warped. See, it's pretty straight when you're considering that other one is pretty warped. Um, and the ink kind of goes into the embossing if that makes sense you tell so i haven't really decided what i wanted to do the um example i showed i was actually thinking about wrapping some of this twine around it both colors of the twine um and the example I watched on YouTube um, had Mr. Ooh, in the amper stand and Mrs. So it was a wedding card. I don't really think these are wedding colors. So I think, didn't Tina say the other day that it looked Eastery? I don't know if I have a happy Easter, but, you know, maybe a happy Easter on some paper would look cool. I don't know. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do with it. But that is for one of my swaps. And I think, honestly, the swap was already supposed to have gone out. So, if you're one of the ones that I owed a swap to, sorry. Um, I also wanted to show, um, one of my friends does card, I, I don't know if you guys heard that I do card class once a month um, here at my house. And I have, right now I have um, eight ladies that come and do card class. So they um, bring, sorry I'm taking on my tape runner and putting it away. Um, they bring tape runner and 
glue and I gave each of them for Christmas. I bought 10 of these little glue bottles and I filled them halfway with art glitter glue. Um, they have their really, really skinny tip on them, which is awesome because you can use it on the back of your die cuts and it doesn't put a ton of ink everywhere so you don't end up making a mess. So they bring their ink bottle um, with ink in it and they bring tape runner and for $15 they get um, they make six cards so um, two of three designs so I design yeah I think so too Easter Tina um, so I design the cards I cut all the pieces um, everything's cut to the size that it needs to be cut they do the stamping, the embossing, the coloring. Um, no, I used to do Stampin' Up, Kathy, but um, my friend Carrie does Stampin' Up, and she's the one that got me started coming to, um, I think she used to call them stamp camps. Now she just calls them card class. Um, but she's the one that gave me the idea, and I thought, man, that would really be fun to have people over at my house to do card class. So up until the first of the year, so all last year I did it, it was $10 for you to come to card class and you got six cards, which honestly is a steal um, because I sell my cards for $3 a piece. So if you were to take the six cards you walk out of here with, you'd make $18 on them and you, I was only charging $10 to make them. So... Um, I upped my price now to $15, which is still, I think, a good deal for six cards, considering that you can go to Walmart and buy a card for $7. I mean, and it's not a whole heck of a lot better or worth anything, um, worth more than anything that I do on my cards. So, um, do you guys want to see one of the, um, you want to see the three cards we made? At last class, if someone says yes, I'll go get them. You can see them. Night, Tina. This is early for you. You must have had a long day. I know that's a really good deal. Okay, you want to see the cards? Okay. Tina, if you want to stay here for a minute, I'll go get them there in the kitchen. Oh. Okay. For you. I had to laugh. Beth said she needed to clean her room, so I told her she was cleaning, like um, Medea says she's cleaning. Um, okay, so the request was for this time to do um, a female birthday, a male birthday, female birthday, male birthday, um... Oh, and a get well or a sympathy. So we chose get well. So this is the female birthday. So it is embossed. And then we just used um, ink to run ink over the flowers. And then we used these little, these things with the green and just use ink in the green. And put the bling and then I put some paper behind it so you had a little color sorry Tina I hurried as fast as I could um, and then we die cut stamped happy birthday uh, with the misty and then die cut the little thing up there and popped it up with some foam and that was it and the big thing at my in my card class is you always stamp something on the inside of the card and always on the envelope because no naked envelopes no naked envelopes 
So that was, um, <laughs> thanks. Um, sorry, you have a headache, Tina. That sucks. Um, this was the male birthday. This was actually really simple. Um, it's just three different stars cut, three sizes, um, and then coordinating paper here. And I had some brads, um, all different kinds of brads, all different colors. So everybody got to choose. Um, I have this. I don't even know where I got this, but it's these brads that are all different kinds of metal colors. So I let them pick what they wanted to put on there for the metal cards. And then um, we used a punch, cut out the oval, stamped happy birthday. And then I didn't have any ribbon. It had ribbon on it, but I didn't have any ribbon. So we used um, embroidery floss. So embroidery floss here, embroidery floss here, and then two layers. So and this is on a craft card. So no naked envelopes. And then there's stars stamped on the inside as well. And then this was the get well. This is actually stamping up. Um, yeah, I like Brad's on cards too, Kathy. Um, this is actually a stamping up set. Um, this was the get well. So it is green on the back. You die cut the stem out of the top layer and put it onto the green layer. So it looks like, you see that? So the green comes through the die cut. And then we die cut the flower. And then I have the little words get well that we cut out of the same color paper that we cut out of the flower. And that was it. And no Nike envelopes. So that was probably the simplest card. But cutting this out is hard because you have to cut out the, um, thanks, Jennifer. Um, you have to cut out the outside of the flower first. And then you have to line up the inside of the flower die on the big outside because you know normally dies um stack this set the dies don't stack for the flower so you have to cut out the outline first and then you have to line it up to cut out the inside um and if you're not careful like me sometimes it can turn into an absolute mess so those were the cards that we made this last class thanks tina and then this was someone sent me um I think we swapped images on one of the swaps. Was that on Happy Mail from the Heart? I don't remember where we stamped images. Um, but this is the one I made the other night. So I used Copics. It says, um, I wasn't going to do anything today. Right on schedule. <laughs> so... I colored that with Copics and I used um, gray on the bottom to make a shadow and a little bit of a light blue to make the um, sky. So I thought he turned out pretty cute. So that is it. And I think that it is time for me to go as well. So um, thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, I actually was just getting ready to watch your um, video, Kathy, <laughs> um, about, I don't know what it was. It was the one you posted tonight, but I can't even remember what it was. Um, so thank you for watching my first foray into Facebook Live. It was definitely um, touch and go there at the beginning. So everybody... Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. Um, if you want, stay subscribed. <laughs> I wouldn't blame you if you didn't after this because the beginning of this was a challenge. Um, but again, thank you so much. Um, good night, everybody. Um, have fun crafting. Um, if you want to see something let me know. Oh, and I probably will do a live or at least record a video. Um, the Habitat for Humanity store in our town has this thing called Upcycle. And you basically get $75 to purchase whatever you want in the store, but you have to do something to it to recycle or upcycle it. So last year I brought, um, I bought a window, one of the old, old, you know, six pane windows. 
um, I bought an old window and I bought some wood and I made a bathroom cabinet out of it. Um, so one of the windows in the bottom was cracked. So I actually broke out the both on the bottom that were cracked and I put chicken wire in the bottom of it. Um, and some little clothespins that you could put like pictures or hang pictures, but it was supposed to be for the bathroom. So it had hinges on the window that closed and a little clasp that closed it um, in the shelf. It had a shelf inside of it. Um, it was amazing. So they did that and they do this art show when everybody gets all their projects done, they do this art show. So it's pretty cool. Um, so this year they want to know um, who wanted to do it again. So, of course, I said, well, absolutely, you know, who wouldn't want to do another upcycle project? So I did, um, I bought my upcycle project, and it is an old sewing machine table, no sewing machine in it, um, but it's an old sewing machine table, and I was going to try and show you what I'm going to make it into. It's similar to this one, but it's not exact. Um, let's see. But I'm going to make it into, I don't know how you can do this, but uh, I'm going to make this sewing table into this. Can you all see that? Can everybody see that? Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks, Tina. So this is what it looks like when it's open. So, mine looks like this right now, similar to this. Only mine has a little section on the side. It's wider, and it has a little section on the side that has a door that opens. Um, so, I'm really, really stoked about it. And I got um, new hardware to put on it. So, um, I'll probably do a live or a video showing you all of it because I got to take pictures of it before I do anything to it anyway. So I just got it out of the car um, tonight because we get Beth's car back tomorrow. So that means I get my car back tomorrow. Um, but that means I have to take back the Equinox that I've been driving and that's been really cool. So anyways, you know, it is what it is, right? So, again, y'all have a great night. Um, I will let you know um, tomorrow. And, Tina, if you're up, you better go live so I can laugh at somebody else besides myself. <laughs> I will talk to y'all later. Y'all have a good night. Be nice to each other. Love you.